Welcome to the Tippa County Development Foundation Halftime Show, featuring the leaders of the North and South Tippa School Districts. Development Foundation Director Chris Llewellyn knows that moving forward together starts with our students and their school leaders. Find out how you can be a part of Tippa County moving forward together at tippacounty.org. Hey, everybody, it's Melinda with the Tippa County Development Foundation Halftime Show. I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. I am here in Sun Bear Studio this week with Miss Beth March, who is the Faulkner Elementary Principal. Beth, thanks so much for coming to talk to me. Thank you for having me. Now, Beth, um, I've said this every week, but a lot of the principals that I have interviewed, I've worked with a lot, but you, I've never even met until today. So you're going to have to tell me all about yourself for one thing. So let's start with how long have you been principal at Faulkner Elementary? This is my second year as principal at Faulkner Elementary. Before this, I served as Miss Emily Eaton's assistant principal for one year. Miss Emily Eaton, was she the principal at Faulkner at that time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what did you do before that? I was the, I started out as a special education teacher and I taught special education for about eight years and I moved to the district special ed case manager, behavioral interventionist and MTSS coordinator. So you have been a district office person. You have been a classroom teacher. Well, not a classroom teacher, a special education yes. teacher. Yes. You have been an assistant principal and you have, are now a principal. Yes, ma'am. Which one of those is your dream job? Principal. <laughs> because why? I realize as an administrator, I could do more for my kids in this role than I ever could as a special education teacher. Yep, that's it's the same story from every administrator. They're great teachers, and it's a shame to lose, lose them in the classroom. But you can just make such an impact as an administrator. What have you learned in the last year or two about yourself what are your strengths keeping the kids at the forefront that's my main focus everything every decision i make is just based on those kids what's best for those kids fair being fair honest transparent yeah, and those are very very difficult things to do i mean let's talk about keeping the kids at the forefront first mm -hmm. um people that aren't in school districts or, or maybe if you've ever run a big organization, you know it's hard to keep the main thing the main thing because there's so many weird, crazy details coming yes. at you every day. Every day is a new day. I can lay out my agenda for the day, determine what I'm going to accomplish for that day, and it never happens. I don't know what's coming at me every day that I walk through the doors of that school. It could be a child that's having a moment, having a day, and my day is consumed with that child to make them better or how can I best help them? How can they be more successful at school that day? And all my plans are chunked to the side for later that evening or the next day or when I can get to them. That child needs me or if it's a teacher, that child needs me and that's where I'm going for that day. Do you, do you find yourself uh, working on totally unplanned things all day long and then you sit at the school after everybody else is gone to do what you meant to do when you got to school? Yes, ma'am. And then I bring it home. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's it's constant. So um, now, Faulkner Elementary com mm -hmm. is comprised of what grades? I am pre-K through fifth grade. How many children in the roundabout? Two seventy-six. That's a lot of people to That's be a in lot charge of. People. of. Yes, ma'am. A lot of little people. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> is your campus spread out, or y'all pretty contained? We are pretty much, we are spread out some, not as some more as the other schools in our district, but we are, our main building houses pre-K through three, and our other building houses fourth through fifth grades. But you have to travel to get to different buildings on the campus. What would you say is the hardest thing about being a principal? And I know there's a lot of hard things. Making sure what's fair or seems fair, may not be fair to one, but it is fair to that one. It may not be necessarily fair, but it is equal according to that individual person, whether it's a child, a parent, a teacher, whatever. That's the hardest. And accepting the um, criticism, per se, that doesn't come directly to me, but indirectly to me, just knowing that I made that decision at the best interest of what I had to at that moment and 
possibly not having the ability to explain myself or I don't explain myself. I just make it and go. Yep. Only only leaders understand how lonely it is because you can't be friends with uh, anybody. <laughs> you just can't. And you can't explain yourself and you just have to call some tough shots and um, just keep rolling every day. I think I think that's why a lot of coaches end up in administrative roles because they've sort of toughened up their hide mm -hmm. uh, being coaches and making the hard decisions that make everybody mad. Um, and, and it just translates over into school. So, yeah. It does. So tell me about Faulkner Elementary. What is awesome there? What's going on great? We have the best kids and the best teachers there. I could not ask for a better faculty than I do have uh, – currently at, at that school the parents the community support is steadily increasing year after year I feel going in my first year even though I was a teacher at that school I still had to prove myself and I feel that we are becoming more successful as the year goes on going into my second year there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel that we will be successful again we will be that school that everybody wants to be a part of and that's not easy because you got to manage like uh, you go through fourth grade, is that correct? Fifth grade. Fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll we'll talk a little bit of education jargon here. You have to deal with the kindergarten assessment, and making yes. sure those kids show growth in that kindergarten year. And then you have to get those third graders ready to pass that gate. And then you have to make sure that they grow from there mm -hmm. into fourth and fifth. So you guys get your own uh, accountability rating separate from... Faulkner High School? No, we are, technically we are an attendance center. We're just on two separate campuses across the road from each other. So my scores and Mr. Pounder's scores combined for our accountability rating K through 12th grade, his subject area test. And so tell me what's new. Do you guys have some, uh, any building going on? Do you, did you get COVID money poured into your campus or new programs that are happening right now? We are um, currently in the process of our annual Harvest Festival is in session. So we are beginning our fundraising for that. And our plans for that money is to continue our expansion on the gym. We have grown rapidly in the last few years for Faulkner Elementary. And we need to increase our gym size. So we have to have almost five year end of the year ceremonies for awards and what such for our kids. Expanding our gym will help accommodate those parents and the families that want to come see their kids at the end of the year or any shows that we put on throughout the year. So that is one of our main focuses that we are currently working on. We have not started the expansion on the outside of the gym yet. However, we have done a lot of the renovations on the inside so far, but there's still more to come for that. That's our major project per se right now on our campus. Okay, and that's your big fundraiser for the year. Yes, our, our harvest festival is. Yes, ma'am. I think that's been going on for a long, long time. For a long it? time. Yes, ma'am. I don't know really the amount of years on it, but ever since I've been there, it's been going on for a very long time. And it's our main fundraiser. That's the only one that we really do throughout the whole school year is that Harvest Festival. So teachers, right now, that's our focus is Harvest Festival and getting it all ready to play out for the parents and community to come out and help support Fountain Elementary School. I have heard uh, lots of different professionals say that as children have come back, little children, not not junior high or high school people, junior high and high school people uh, knew what school was like before COVID, mm -hmm. but little kids don't. And so I think they suffered a lot. It seems to me like there's a lot of residual suffering yes. from COVID, not just educational setbacks, but maybe emotional Yes. Social setbacks. So can you talk about that, how y'all address that and how you're coming back to some kind of sense of normal? So our older students have done a fairly decent job of going back to pre-COVID when school was in session. It took um, quite a, f a little bit to get a, to get them there. However, they're more responding to the changes going back to pre-COVID. Our little children... They didn't even begin school when COVID started, so they had no idea how school was ran. And it's different. Um, they are more, they're, they're not used to the structure and the routine and just that we're on a schedule. 
um, that's been one of the biggest struggles that we have seen with our littles is the struggle of the structure. The teacher says, you know, s- straight line. They don't. Right. And that would have never been a question mark. No. It would have just been like that from the time yes. you're five. Yes. And, and it's yeah. way different than it has been pre-COVID. With our little start now, it's very different. Are you seeing them coming back to some normalcy? Are they working their way that direction? Our kindergarten is getting there. I joke all the time and tell the kindergarten teachers, when you see the pumpkins out, you're doing, we're getting there. That's when they'll start getting in line and putting their hands to their side and being quiet in the hallways. So um, kindergarten is always a time of struggle for, for teachers and kids. But once they, once the pumpkins come out, they'll start learning. <laughs> That's funny. My daughter taught kindergarten for a while, and, and I asked her what she learned from her experience, and she said, don't tie wet shoelaces. <laughs> don't touch them. <laughs> I'll let you listeners think about that for a few minutes. Okay, tell me what your plans are for Faulkner. What's the future look like? Five years down the road, what's it look like at Faulkner Elementary? Just give us your dream. My ultimate goal as principal for Faulkner Elementary is to be an A school. Our accountability rating is incorporated to the Faulkner High School, but there's no doubt in my mind that we will not get there quicker than the next five years. We've grown dramatically in our um, attendance, in our enrollment. We've grown so much. We we were a pre-K-6 school, and we had no room. So we had to move sixth grade over to Faulkner High School campus and we are still literally busting at the seams with just fifth grade, which is a great thing. Just where do we put them? So we are looking where, where are we putting these kids? Our classes are just growing so much in size, which is a great thing. And I would love to see an expansion on our campus or Mr. Pounders cannot accommodate another grade level at his campus either, which is a great thing for our district that we are growing. I would love to see more of the students, the younger kids, come on to our campus and enjoy being part of the Eagle family with us. Beth, I know that Faulkner Elementary and North Tippa School District is lucky to have you. It's been so nice to meet you and talk about school with you. I wish you all the best, and I thank you for coming into the studio. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Okay, everybody, this has been Miss Beth March, who is the principal at Faulkner Elementary in the North Tippa School District. I really am glad to have gotten to meet her and talk to her today. And that's it for this episode of the Tippa County Development Foundation Halftime Show, where we're moving forward together. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the game. This halftime show has been brought to you by the Tippa County Development Foundation, moving Tippa County forward together. And now we take you back to the second half of tonight's game.